We always continue to have Fred Guttenberg on this show. His daughter, Jamie, was killed in the Parkland school shooting, and he's since dedicated his life to gun safety through common sense gun legislation. Fred, um, it's been a few weeks since the penalty phase concluded, although there's an upcoming hearing on November yeah. 1st. Um, I told you before you got here today uh, that today is my daughter's eighth birthday. And I'm probably going to struggle a little bit with this. And I've always said to you on her behalf and on behalf of countless others, I'm grateful for your advocacy. But you're more than an advocate. You are Jamie's dad. So I had to ask, how are you doing? That's my very first question. How are you doing? I know it's been, like I said, a little bit. It's been a minute since that determination by a jury that the shooter for the Parkland shooting is not going to get the death penalty. Um, how are you feeling? Well, first, um, you have to wish your daughter a happy birthday for me. I will. Um, because everything I do is as a dad. Yeah. And, and everything I do is for the young kids like your daughter. Um, Regarding the trial, uh, I, I spent, I guess, about four and a half years preparing myself mentally for that trial and for that verdict. Um, and I thought I was prepared to hear any verdict until I actually heard the verdict, mm -hmm. and I wasn't. And, and I went through two really tough days trying to make sense of it. Because if that was not a death penalty case, then there is no such thing. Um, but after about two days, I kind of came to a place where no matter what happened that day, I still visit Jamie in the cemetery. And I went back to focusing on her. Um, you know, every time I get a little off or down and, and I need to be refocused, Jamie always brings me back. And so here's where I'm at. He's out of my head. That monster is out of my head. I can't control what the verdict did. He's out of my head. Every day going forward, rather than wondering about what's going to happen to him, um, I will really double down on my efforts to focus on my daughter, my family, and, and fixing this problem that's wreaking havoc across our country. And Katie, it is fixable. It is not rocket science on the things that we can and should be doing. You opened with St. Louis. It is just another example of failure, honestly, of politicians to have done the right thing in a state like Missouri uh, is the reason that shooting happened. Had they had real red flag laws there, it could have been stopped. You mentioned that if there was ever a case that perhaps the death penalty would have been appropriate, it would have been that of the murder of your daughter mm -hmm. and the others. And people also need to recall, too, your son went to school there as well. He survived, but traumatized, like so many others, um, at the hands of the shooter. Were you always a proponent for the death penalty? Because I feel mm -hmm. like... This, this Parkland verdict has created a very interesting dialogue about the death penalty. And I don't know if your opinion on it changed because of what happened to Jamie or if this is something that you always ascribe to. You know, what not everybody knows is you're thank you for talking about my son. Of course. Because he was there. And in fact, he was on the phone with me wanting to turn around and run back because he couldn't find his sister. And I'm screaming at him to keep running. And while he was on the phone with me, he's telling me there's more shots, which I'm hearing through the phone. And that was the shooter on the third floor killing his sister. And, and so he has been traumatized. Um, has that played a role in how I think about the death penalty? Hell yeah. The truth is, I'm not really sure I thought with substance about it a whole lot before I, I, you know, I watched other cases. I thought of other um, moments where I thought it would have been applicable, but it was never something I ever thought would be something I would have to really invest myself in until this. And after learning of, of what this shooter did, killing 17, wounding 17, and the planning and the determination, it was supposed to be worse. 
He was supposed to blow out the window and shoot into the crowd of everybody running. He didn't want to kill 17. Yeah, he showed no, he had no remorse. He said he would have killed more if he, he had the chance. He wanted to kill hundreds. He has no right remaining on the face of this earth. There is no redeemable value to him as, as, as a uh, human being. He sits in his jail cell now, and, not, and this was presented at trial, still thinking of people he wished he could have killed. This is who he is. He will get prison justice. Are you going to participate in that victim impact hearing that's coming up November 1st? So um, I'm struggling with mm -hmm. what I want to do. Um, the last impact statement that we gave a trial had to be vetted by both sets of attorneys, and it had to meet a whole lot of legal requirements. We couldn't refer to him. We couldn't refer to the murder. We couldn't call him a killer. We had to keep the focus on the impact on us. And so I didn't get to say a lot of the things that I wanted to say back then. But now I'm not sure what I want to do. Because like I just said to you before, he's out of my head. Um, and I am in a place where I said this to my wife just yesterday because um, she asked me what I want to do. And, and I said, if I think it's going to make me feel better, I'll do it. But I may not decide until that morning. I don't know if I think it's going to help me or not, um, but I will decide. Um, I, I've already told the state attorneys I'm not committing to doing anything or not. If I walk in that morning and tell you I'm doing it, you'll just have to make time for me. Um, but I'm not sure there's anything more for me to say about him or to him that I haven't already said. And again, it's going to be one of those things where it's going to have to make me feel better. Give me some reason to go back to see Jamie and say, here's why I did this. Yeah. And if I don't come up with that rationale, I won't it do it. It doesn't make sense. No. We talked about St. Louis. You know, there were armed guards there. Yeah. The doors were locked. I mean, it's all of the GOP talking points when they will ignore the fact that the guns are the problem. It was an AR-15. The fact that this gunman had 600 rounds of ammunition, the gun jammed. I mean, there's all yeah, of these yeah. reasons why fate intervened to make sure and that again, nothing under was 21. Happened. And under 21. And then his own message uh, was the, quote, perfect storm of yeah. doing this. Yeah. What, why are the upcoming midterms? I mean, I know that you sometimes feel like you're ringing this bell, ringing this bell. Why are these upcoming midterms so important for people to understand that those in positions of power, like the Josh Hawley's, for example, yeah, right, yeah. where this happened, why is it so important to make sure that you don't have a Josh Hawley, and that you have somebody who actually says, you know what, the guns are the problem, and that even though we may have red flags, you've got to have the guns under control? Really? You know why? Because there are people who have been elected to serve who are liars. Josh Hawley is a liar. And because he lies to the American people and to his constituents, you have shootings like this. OK, they use the whole issue of crime as a talking point, right, mm -hmm. as a slogan. They have zero interest in solving it, which is why per capita violent crime in states like Missouri is higher than in the blue states that they always like to point fingers at. Because they are the ones who refuse to address the reality of what caused this violence. In fact, Missouri did not have a red flag law. The police went to the scene of um, the shooter's home, I think, about 10 days before this, yep, yep. and determined that he had a legal right to keep his weapon. However, a decision was made to give it to a third party. Somehow or another, he got it, from he got it back yeah. and managed to acquire 600 rounds of ammunition, which also gets to the fact that we not only need to address the reality of how easy it is for people to get guns, but also ammunition. You know, Jamie's law is sitting yeah. in the United States Congress I was now. I going to say, what's happening with that law? And which only seeks to extend background checks to ammunition to prevent kids like him from walking into a store and buying these massive rounds. And what's happening with that law? I need more people serving in the House and the Senate who simply want to save lives, who don't want to see more dead kids, who don't want to see DNA test kits like what they're doing in Texas right now. And so 
That law requires we turn out and vote. I, I'm hearing all the, the news over the past few days over polls and voting and everything else. Everybody who's listening to this interview, tune out all the BS. Just go vote. Show up and vote. Do your civic duty. Vote like your life depends on it. Vote like your child's life depends on it. Vote like somebody else's life that you love depends on it, because it does. Don't vote for the liars like Josh Hawley. It's deadly. Fred, I've said from the very beginning that I don't know how you find the energy and the courage to do this because you're tireless. But for your kids, I know. And that's why I can only say thank you. I wish there was more that I could do. And I feel like that is something I'm trying to do by having you talk to the viewers, by having us use our social media platforms to get out the news. Um, it's it's a very real American problem. Um, and through the work you're doing, Fred, you're you are making a difference. And so I appreciate you so much for being here today. Thank you. For and I will me. definitely tell my Charlotte that you wish her a very happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday, Charlotte. <laughs> and vote, 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 vote. Exactly. Fred Gunnberg, thank you for being here.